Good day, this is Jim Pytel from Columbia Gorge Community College. This is Digital Electronics 1. This lecture is entitled Constructing Adders Using the VHDL Structural Approach. In our previous lectures, we have discussed creating full adders using several different methods. So compare and contrast what we developed with the minimum SOP expression for the carryout and the sum versus using a reusable component called the half adder. They both perform the same function. Three inputs, A, B, and CI, produce two outputs, a sum and a carryout. We went on to show how this reusable component can be used over again and again and again. And what I'm going to try to do is just show you how VHDL is set up to use that structure approach. Before we go into the details of doing this, I'd like to say is there are right ways and wrong ways of teaching the structural approach. I certainly hope the way I'm going to teach it here is the right way. We'll see. But here's the wrong way. Go ahead and try to teach structural approach and create a reusable component called AND gate that performs the AND function and go through all the necessary hoo-ha and hand waving to create a component AND gate. And then go do it again for a component that call, that's called OR gate and do that again. Well, check it out. That's like selling air. There's already a component called AND gate. There's already a component OR gate. Why would I waste my time creating a component called AND gate or OR gate? Because if you think about it, an AND gate already is a component you're using it in our structure excuse me in our data flow approach when you say for example b and c i that and statement is this what this is is nine inputs nine possible inputs to a two input and gate and it's a truth table and you might be freaking out right now you're like hey wait a second this is binary there should only be two inputs I'm here to tell you there are nine possible inputs in standard logic, of which I know maybe a couple of them. So obviously zero and one, they're logical one. A uh, Z, it's a imp uh, high impedance state. It's not connected to something, uh, almost like a drawbridge. L's and H's, they're weak lows and weak highs. That dash, um, I believe is a don't care situation. And the, the component and thus far what we've been using has got this truth table right here. That's the only thing we've been using. Zero and zero is a zero. Zero and a one is a zero. Zero and a one is a zero. One and a one is one. And this truth table expands out to accommodate for all those nine inputs, excuse me, nine possible inputs for both inputs, whatever the permutations that is. And it's pretty neat. It's kind of like a component that's already been defined for you. Okay, so what I'm saying is, why would I ever use the structural approach to create something that's already been defined for me? What I'm going to do is I'm going to create something cool that's never been used before. Well, this one's been used before a lot. I'm going to create a half adder. And what's inside that half adder could be a data flow approach. It could be a behavioral approach. In fact, it could be a structural components from something previously defined. And that's what the structural approach is. It's previously defined components used over and over and over again. Uh, before I go into that, something super cool about this too. Standard logic, the vector, or excuse me, standard logic data types, it's called a resolved data type. So if you ever do something insane, for example, you take the output A and B, C and D, and you take the outputs and tie them together. That's a no-no. You don't do that. Why? Because if that's a one and that's a zero, you know, it's 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 not it's not good. If you ever do something insane like that, it's got a resolution table where it's almost the same thing as this guy, where nine values, say for example, a high and a Z. A high and a Z are mistakenly tied together. What's a Z? It's a high impedance state. You learn about this a little bit later. It's almost like a drawbridge is up. So what appears in the output of one? Okay, it's that it's that resolution table. I think that's pretty cool too. So not only is there definitions for individual components like ands and ors, it's also got competing values for um, if something is accidentally tied together. But I digress. Remember our previous discussion. We're going to kind of do this in a step-by-step -step fashion. And we'll do this again. We'll come back to this. Step one, we made a half adder out of an exclusive or and an and, where the sum bit is A exclusive or B. The carry out is A and B. And all we did, just put a box around it. And then close up the box. What do we get? It's a half adder. Okay. So what I can do is I can come up with the data flow definition for the sum and the carry out. That's easy. But now check this out. 
what I'm going to do is the next step. Take half adder 1 and half adder 2, which have been previously defined. And I'm going to hook it up in the following fashion, where I've got some inputs coming in here. I've got outputs there. And this is tricky. Some internal signals being generated that are not accessible when I, you guessed it, put it in a box. Where is that internal signal right there? And right there, let's call that M. Let's call that N. M and N. So notice when I use the structural component, structural approach. Yes, I'm using components half adder one and half adder two that have already been previously defined. Additionally, I'm using internal signals. M and N don't have a connection to the outside world. And if I define that larger red box as an interconnection of a half adder with another half adder with an or with two internal signals, I can just create this box definition of a full adder. And just because it's going to be easier for me to write the next drawing, I'm just going to flip it on its side and, you guessed it, hook it up in a four-bit adder configuration, where this is the MSB side, that's the LSB side. It's a four-bit parallel adder where the B0 and A0 are being added in the low order, and then all the way up to the high order, A3, B3. And what do I get from my outputs? I get my MSB to LSB, and making sure that I'm tying that low order CI to zero, because it's the lowest order. And you guessed it, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna put it in a box. This kind is blue. I'm taking four previously defined components, four full adders and using them to make what's called a four bit adder. And there you go. Now I could take two four bit adders, define them hooked up in a file in a in a different fashion, put a box around that, call it an eight bit. Do that again, 16, 32, 64. Basically all I have to do is I write the half adder definition once. I write the full adder definition once. I write a four bit once and then use the 4-bit to create an 8-bit, use an 8-bit to create a 16, two 8-bits to create a 16, so on and so forth. So you get this staged approach where you're saving yourself tons and tons of work using the structural approach. Some people think that there is this sharp definition between structural and data flow. I see their point. I do see their point. But think about here. We started at the beginning with a data flow description. In reality, what is it doing? It's using this reusable and. So it's kind of like structural. And if I define this new component as a half adder, which produces almost like a, an operator, it's almost like it's a data flow. So there's a little mishmash in between there, but the, the real point of structural approach is that I'm making reusable components and saving myself time. So let's do this step by step. Let's do step one, just create a half adder. And what we're going to try to do is we're going to make a VHDL program that I'm going to call added up, of which the half adder will be defined, you guessed it, two half adders in combination will define a full adder. Four full adders in combination will create a four bit parallel binary adder. And then I can go on from there, hence the name add it up. I'm just kind of sticking these reusable components together. Just see if you could do the following. See if you can write the entity statement and the architecture for a half adder. And one thing quick here too is, and this is about the right way and the wrong way to teach structural approach. This has got an A and B input. That's got a sum and a carry out output. Notice what the full adder has. It has A and B and CI inputs, and it's got sum and carry out outputs. Notice what these guys have. They have A inputs, B inputs, C outputs, sum outputs. What I'm kind of alluding to here is to stay organized, and by all means, don't name everything A. Don't name everything B. Don't name everything C. You'll get confused real quick. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to say, okay, this is my half adder. The ports, which we'll talk about in a little bit, for my half adder, let's call them A, H, and B, H. So A, H is my inputs. B, H is my input. What is coming out of it? Sum, H. C, O, H. Okay, so I'm defining an entity. Determine how the architecture statement for that half, I'm going to call it half, into the half. What is the architecture statement for that? And use the data flow approach, i.e. come up with the expressions for those guys, sum H and C, O, H. And go ahead and close up the architecture statement. And so go ahead and 
pause the lecture and see if you can come up with an approximation of the empty statement, the architecture statement for just the half atom. And if you're using the IC Project Navigator to actually go ahead and do this or Webpack or any other utility, you could be using Quartus too for all that matter. Because again, it's VHDL, it's portable. Just save it under the project, let's call it add it up. Okay, so here is my guess at what the entity and architecture statement for our just the half adder is going to look like. There you go, that's my best stab at it. My entity half is end half. What's in between the bookends? The ins and out, the port statement. I've got two ins, A, H, and B, H. They're both standard logic. I've got two outs, some H, and C, O, H. That's it. Now go on to the architecture. I'm going to call it data flow because that's how I'm doing it. I'm coming up with SOP expressions for sum and CO. What is sum H? It's assigned. Notice that the arrow is going this way. We'll, sh we'll show you port mapping in a little bit here. AH exclusive or BH, as we'd expect right there. What is carry out H? It's assigned AH and BH. Those are the only two statements we need in our architecture statement. Okay, now like I said earlier, is build a module, test a module. There's no sense even continuing this exercise if this does if this stuff doesn't work. Notice here too, I, I'm just writing this thing on OneNote. I gotta go ahead and test my syntax. Maybe what I should do is just test if the half adder works. So there's no sense in building this giant thing if the most basic component we have in this giant thing, which we use over and over, doesn't work. Okay, so try to put this thing inside a VHDL document. Go ahead and do a syntax check on it, maybe even simulate it. Okay, so I'm in ISC Project Navigator, this 13.4 version, and I'm starting a new project. I'm calling it Add It Up. And I am using a Spartan 3E. Mine's a Nexus 2, so it actually has the 1200 on it. You might be using the 500 or whatever. Synthesis tool I'm using is the Xilinx version and then iSim. Those are the free ones. Go ahead, next, finish it up. What I'm going to do is have a new source. What is it? It's going to be a VHDL module, and I'm going to call it half. What are my inputs for it? I'm going to call it AH, BH, sum H, carry out H. Sum H is an out, as is carry out H. Next, finish. Kind of creates a little, and notice that what's the three, what's the three parts of it? a VHDL program? The library. I did not have that in the last one. The entity. There you go. It's already done my entity statement. What's the architecture? That's the third thing that I need is the architecture. I'm going to call that architectural because it automatically picks behavioral for you for some reason. I'm going to call it data flow because that's how I'm describing it. I'm using the, the expressions for it. And now what I can do is I can just define what is sum h. Sum h is defined a h exclusive or b h. What is carry out h is defined a h and b h. There you go. I'm going to save it. Now again, I can go ahead and use some of these tools over here. I can check syntax of it. There you go. Green check mark. Let's just go ahead and right into a simulation of it. Again, what's the button, the radio button that will kill you? This guy. I'm going to go to simulation. Notice how this design window changes down here. Am I in the correct? I don't see that I sim. Where is it? I need to be there. Okay, notice how that, that design window changes. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and simulate the behavioral model. I sim will come up. I'll bring that up in the next window. Okay, there you go. I'm going to go ahead and force a clock on AH. Do it a couple times here. Do this. BH, apply, okay. Go ahead and run that for 16 microseconds. Now I could go ahead and zoom in and see, does that actually behave like we'd expect there? What is the truth table for a half adder? It's adding A and B and the sum and the carry out. The carry out is the MSB, the sum is the LSB. So right here, actually go ahead, let's go ahead and add some colors in here. This is kind of cool. I thought it would just change the signal color. So it's adding A0, B0. What do I get as my output? It should be 0 MSB, 0 LSB. And what I can also do is use the slider here. So I'm currently right here, it's adding 0 B. 1 A, what do I get out as my output? It should be 0, 1. And then I'm going along. 0, 1 is my output. 1, 0 is my output because I've got 1B, 1A. It's adding them up. It's generating the proper carry and the proper sum. And then it's starting the sequence over again. Build a module, test a module. Build a module, test a module. Our half adder works exactly like we expected to. And thumbs up, we can go ahead and use this guy over and over again, hopefully, 
to create a full adder. Okay, so let's go back and we'll describe how we use the structural approach to create a full adder. Okay, let's see if we can go ahead and use the structural approach to create a full adder now using two half adders and an OR gate. The entity statement should be super easy for this because again, what are we defining? We're defining a box with three inputs, respectfully, A, B, and CI, and two outputs, SUM and CO. And like I said earlier, by all means, call them all A's. Go ahead, see if you can get through this without messing something up. So what I'm gonna do is just call that AF, BF, CIF, SUMF, COF. So I kind of just know, okay, I'm dealing with a full adder ports. This is what I'm saying is, is there's a right way and a wrong way to teach it. I'm trying to teach you guys the right way, the easiest way, in my opinion, at least to stay organized. Do the entity statement. We'll go on to the architecture statement real quick. Uh, I don't know if you guys caught that in that last one. My uh, entity statement here, I was missing the begin for the half there. Make sure you uh, put that in there. And I did for my VHDL, but that's what I'm saying. This is like writing these things out on paper or OneNote as this tablet here. You're not going to catch that syntax error until you actually write it out and put it through a syntax checker. Do the entity statement. It should look something like this. There you go. I've got three inputs, AF, BF, CF, CIF. They're all ins. They're all standard logic. I've got two outputs, SUM F and COF. They're all outputs. They're all standard logic. And I ended my full statement and ended my full entity. Let's call our architecture, since we're using the structural approach, let's call it structural of full is, notice a conspicuous pause. So I'm going to put something in there. What is that? That's called the declarations section. Okay, look at the diagram. Do you see a signal that is inaccessible to the outside world of that entity? I do. I see two of them. I'm going to call them M and N. So what I need to do is create a signal, an internal signal in that declaration section that I can use a little bit later on to hook up my two half adder components. Okay, so let's go ahead and see if you can create two standard logic signal definitions within that declaration section. It should look something like this. Okay, so there are my two internal signal assignments. M, it's standard logic, and it's standard logic. It's almost like the entity statement, but since they're not ins or outs, they're not accessible, you just leave off the in and out. This is where things start differing from the data flow. I still have to define the component that I'm using. That's exactly what we're using. We're using the half adder as a component. You'll see something cool once I create this VHDL program here. The component we're going to use is obviously half adder. And what I have to do is I have to tell this architecture statement that's the part I'm going to use. And obviously the description for it is component. What's the name of the component? Let's call it half. That's what I just created. Is. Do another port statement. It's almost kind of like. The entity we had previously defined, what I'm trying to do is just, okay, go get me a half. What are its ports? Well, what were the ports that we had for the half adder? Just go look at the entity statement for the half adder, write it down. It's going to look something like this. And that's what I, that's awesome about copy and paste. You can just go back to that entity description that you just made for the half. Control C, Control V, and that's exactly what I did here. Okay, now what I've got to do is I've got to end that component. I'm going to go ahead and use the same coloration. Which component am I ending? I'm ending half. Okay, just in case you are using other components in there. Okay, and this is what I mean about the right way and the wrong way to teach this thing. Why would I ever create a component AND gate that has inputs and outputs when I can just use the data flow definition of AND gate? What I'm trying to do is illustrate, okay, here is something new, totally brand new that no one's ever thought of before. Actually, they probably have, but I'm just creating this component, which I can use in a couple different in a couple different instances, and that's exactly what's going to happen. It's called instantiation. I'm going to make use of this component two times. Okay, so let's go into our begin. We have, all we've done thus far. That's all declarations, declaring internal signals, declaring which part we're using, the half adder, declaring what the inputs and output ports are for that particular component. Now let's go ahead and hook things up. Let's bring that drawing down so we can see exactly how it's hooked up again. So first thing we've got to do is go ahead and give the two half adders a name. And since I've called them HA1 and HA2, let's just call them that. So this is what's called a component instantiation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give the name of the component, which I call HA1. What is HA1? There's a colon there. It's a half. So that name there 
is the component you've defined previously. I can't use any other components because I haven't confined, I haven't, uh, I haven't provided any other components in my uh, declarations. You got to give that instance a name. What is its type from something you've previously defined? And now what you've got to do is called a port map. Okay, the port map. Do you remember how our data flow? You know, think about sum for the half. The arrow goes that way. Is a half exclusive or b half? The port map is almost like the opposite a world of that. Sorry for the jump there. So port map, the arrow goes the other way. Okay, whereas in when your signal assignment, the arrow goes that way. A exclusive or B is assigned to some H. The port map, the arrow goes the other way. So how do I write the port map for H A1? Well, it looks like its A input is the A full input. Its B input is the B full input. Its sum is the M output. And its carry out is the N internal signal. So now what I've got to do is use what's called a port map. And I know you can put this all in one line, but what I'm going to do is, is make this readable. Port, port map. What am I mapping? Well, what are my ports? I've already defined them right here. AH, BH, sum H, COH. For HA1, how are those mapped? So just give ourselves a little bit of room and bring that drawing down. So just AH, BH, sum H, COH. Whereas signal assignment is that way, you know, a data flow, port map, the arrow goes the other way. What is AH? Well, it's AF. What's BH? BF. What is sum H? It's designed, it's uh, mapped to our internal signal M, COH. It's our internal signal N. Got to put a comma between these and then close up that whole port map statement. This can be done on one line. What I'm saying is, is this could go up there, behind there, behind there, behind there, with the semicolon closing everything up. I don't like doing it that way because I can see uh, what my inputs and outputs are. Again, like just making it readable for further use. How am I going to define the other half adder? Okay, so the other half adder is I've got to do the exact same thing. I've got to give it a name, what type of component, where its ports, which I can't change that stuff in the green box, but where its ports are mapped to. I can change where its ports are mapped to. Go ahead and just take your best stab at HA2. Okay, so it's probably going to look something like this. You thought I was going to give you the answer, huh? I'm just setting it up for a uh, blank for uh, how the, the syntax should look like. And if you've done the, uh, the actual signal assignment here, you realize that there's an error that we're missing here. We're missing this guy right there, another internal signal. Okay, let's call that P. Okay, it's an internal signal. So let's go ahead and go back up to our declaration section, add a signal P in there. See, this is great troubleshooting exercise. Okay, so there's the internal signal P. That's a standard logic. Okay, let's go ahead and see if you can do the port mapping for HA2. It should look something like this. There you go. I'm going to go ahead and clean up those greens there. Okay, because half adder 2, what is its A half input? It's M. What is its B half input? It's carry in for the full. What is its sum half output? It's sum for the full. What is its carry out half output? It's our internal signal P. Okay, are we done with our architecture statement for our full adder? No, we have not defined the carry out, which should be P or N. So now we can just go ahead and use a regular data flow description. Carry out of the full. Notice the arrow is going this way because it's not a port map. Port map, arrow goes the opposite way. P or N. And that's our full adder. So build a module, test a module, build a model, test a, test a module. Okay, so we've already tested our half adder. Let's go ahead and see if our structural description of a full adder works. And again, this may or may not work. I have no idea. This one note, I wrote this thing with a pencil. Let's see if this thing works actually in the, um, using, a, using proper VHDL and syntax. Okay, so I'm still in the add it up project. Now what I'm going to do is go over here and I'm going to add a source. Okay, it's something we've previously, I've previously written in the background it is the full adder VHDL program. And I'm going to save the unnecessary steps walking through it. I'm going to go ahead and grab it and just open it up. Now watch what happens right here. 
Watch what happens right here as soon as I press OK. So it's adding file to the project. Look what happens. Whereas I previously had one half adder, now I've got one full adder with two babies. Okay? It's got two half adders within it. You haven't told VHDL that, it just knows it. Okay? It reaches into that full program and it realizes that there are two instantiations of half adders. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and open that guy up, double click it. There is my full. VHDL program, exactly what we wrote in Notepad. Here's what is its entity statement. It has three inputs, AF, BF, and carry in F. has two outputs, sum F, carry out F. It's got three internal signal assignments. Again, we're in the declaration section of that architecture. It has one component. Okay, I know we're going to be using it two times, but uh, before we go on to there, notice too, as look here, I've put some comments in there. This is a great idea for any VHDL program, but here's a structural approach. I should probably tell you what's going on. How am I connecting those things up? Look at signal M's comment. It's the sum output of the first, I should actually say, half adder going to the AH input of the second half adder. It's telling me where that internal signal is. These are kind of notes for myself. And I'm going to go ahead and save that because I just made a change to it. Uh, I'm, these are just notes to myself that I'm just reminding myself in a month from now, in a year from now, when I have to go back and troubleshoot those things, what is MN and P within there? Okay, and notice here I'm putting a comment on a previously defined, designed, excuse me, previously defined reusable component that produces the sum H and COH outputs. Let's go on down. So we have one component. What's this guy? That's my first instantiation, HA1. What's its name? HA1. Little colon there. What type of component it is? It's a half. What's its port map? Its AH is actually AF. Its BH is actually BF. Its sum H, its output is going to be going to M. COH is going to be going to N. You can notice how uh, I've written this thing out in a readable format. I'm going to do the second instantiation all in one line, which is totally acceptable. But to me, that doesn't look as readable. You could do it that way. I don't care. But what's its name? HA2, I gave it a unique name. They obviously can't have the same, but they can be the same component. What's its port map? AH is actually M, BH is actually CIF, the carry in for the full. Sum H is actually producing the sum full for the output, and its carry out is actually being assigned to the internal signal P. Finally, what is COF? Notice the directions of the arrows there. It's a data flow approach now. It's basically P or N, whereas the port maps, the arrow is the opposite. End. So there you go. It's pretty cool the fact that you get to see that VHDL recognizes that there are two instantiations of half adders. I can close that up because you'll see in a little bit here, we're going to be making more and more use of these things, but it's part. There it's babies. Will this thing work? Will our full adder work? I have no idea. Okay, I just wrote this thing out. So let's go ahead and see if we can uh, go ahead and do a syntax check. And again, look at I'm in simulation, so I should probably be over here. I can check the syntax, and hopefully we're going to get a green check mark. Let's cross our fingers. And that took forever. Okay, I got a green check mark. We're looking good. So let's actually, again, build a module, test a module. We know that the half adder works. Does our full adder work? Let's go ahead and go into a simulation of that. Okay, I'm going to actually check that one. Again, which one am I checking? I'm checking the full adder. Let's go ahead and simulate. It's going to go open up iSim. We'll go ahead and pause and open up another window. Okay, so there's iSim. I have four SIM clocks on AF, BF, and CIF. Basically, those are the inputs for our full adder. And I've got some outputs. My inputs here are green going from, well, it doesn't really matter, uh, but my outputs are COF, that's the MSB. Sum F, that's the LSB. As you would expect, when zero plus zero plus zero, what's my output? Zero, zero. And you got to know the truth table. Does this thing work? Does this full adder behave like we'd expect? Yes, it does. Okay, just go ahead and walk through the truth table. This thing's pretty cool right here. The slider bar, I'm going to slide it through. Went in, under, that way I don't have to read that uh, time in the diagram. It went zero, zero, zero. I get zero, 01. When zero, zero, 001, I get out zero, 01. So what I'm reading is COF first, okay, because that's the MSB. Uh, let's try test another circumstance here. When I've got 11 one as my inputs, I should be getting a 10 out, 10, as we'd expect. Let's go on to this end circumstance here. I've got three ones coming in. As you would expect, what's the answer when you sum up three ones? The answer is three. It's binary three, one, one. So our full adder works. We're super happy. We've got thumbs up. What do you think we're going to do next? 
we're going to make the full adder a component, and we're going to use it inside a combination of four full adders to make a four-bit parallel adder. So let's go ahead and uh, do some uh, hand waving on that thing to see no, so you see what I'm talking about, and we'll actually go right back into a VHDL program of exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so here's my four-bit parallel binary adder made up of four full adders. Before we write the entity and architecture statement, just think about how many components are we going to use? It's a trick question because the answer is, is one. It's one component. It's called a full adder. There are four instantiations of that component. One quick note too here before we start this guy. To do our previous lecture we had a grounded input right there on our carry in input. We don't want that because we want to make use of this component, the 4-bit parallel adder, to combine two of them together to create an 8 bit parallel binary adder. Think of it in terms of a box. What is the entity statement for it? What are our inputs? Well, we've got a carry in. We've got a B input. We call that a vector, a standard logic vector. B, 3 down to 0. We've got an A input. Same thing, 3 down to 0. Okay, what's our outputs? We've got our sum outputs, 3 down to 0. And if I was to stick this just as if I, if I didn't want to go expand beyond a 4-bit binary adder, I could actually call that sum 4. So what I would make is sum 4 down to 0 because that's the MSB. But since I want to make this reusable, what I'm going to do is I'm going to define this as sum 3 down to 0. It's a vector output. And what's the other output? A single standard logic output called carry out. And like I said earlier, is you can call these A's and B's and C's and sums and carry outs the same thing, but it's going to get confusing super, super quick because you don't know what's what. Since this is a 4-bit adder, I know it's going to kind of drive you crazy. I'm going to call the A input A4, 3, down to 0. All I'm doing is just, it's a memory device. I can do this. You might get confused. I'm not going to. I'm going to stay organized. B4, 3, down to 0 standard logic vector. What's CI? CI, that's just a single standard logic. Same thing for our sums. I can call those, let's call them, since it's the sums for the 4-bit adder, let's call it sum 4, 3, down to 0. Let's call it carry out 4. And let's, because we're sticking with that, CI 4. So see if you can write an entity statement. And I'm here as the challenge is see if you can write the architecture statement. Okay, I'll give my definition how I'm going to do the architecture statement. And what we're getting is we're going to use a component. What's the component? It's the full adder. What are the ports for the full adder? Well, it's AF, BF, CIF, COF, SUMF. So I could rewrite these things with all their ports. For the first component, you only have to write it once. That's what I'm talking about in the declaration section. While we're in the declaration section, are there internal signals that you see? What about the carry out of the lower order adder? Look at all those. All carry outs feeding the next carry ins. Let's come up with a convention. Let's call that one Z internal signal. Let's call that one Y. Let's call that one X. So we're kind of looking at our diagram here. What do I need to do the structural approach? It looks like I'm going to need three internal signals and a single component. Okay, now we're in the the begin section, I have to start instantiating components. How many of them do, am I going to do? I'm going to do four of them. Let's call that one full zero, full one, full two, full three. What's the port map for full zero look? AF should be A four zero. BF should be B four zero. CIF should be CI four. COF should be Z and sum F should be sum four zero. Get what I'm saying? And now move on to the next component instantiation instantiation. Full one, full two, full three. And you get the picture, okay? You should be able to write the entity and architecture statement. And we'll go into the VHD editor and go ahead and see if this thing works. Uh, one quick note here too, you may, and it drives me kind of crazy, some manufacturers on some of these fixed function integrated circuits, you might see rather than a zero on the LSB, you might see a one, two. It drives me crazy, uh, but yeah, when in Rome, do what the Romans do. So you might see um, different subscripts notations. I would much prefer that the LSB is always zero, but I can't get all get my way all the time. Okay, so let's go ahead and see if you can write the VHDL program for 
adder four, using the structural approach that makes use of four full adders and those three internal signals which we've defined. Okay, so I'm in the added up project again. Notice all I've got is a full adder and it's got two babies, half adders. So what I'm gonna do is add a source. It is my VHDL program for the adder four, of which full is a component. So this is pretty cool. Watch what happens here. I'm gonna add a source, add a four, open it up. And when I click okay, watch what happens on right there. Okay, full went away. Where is full? Well, it's the adder four's babies. How many of them are there? There's four of them. Click that one. It's got two half adder babies. Two half adder babies, two half adder babies. You get the picture. Look at how much work I saved myself. Okay, I wrote half adder once. I wrote a full adder once. And then I wrote adder four. Look at all those programs. It recognizes the structure of it. Okay, half adder is a component of full. Full is a component of adder four. So let's go ahead and look at how I wrote adder four. And there you go. What if I define adder four as my inputs? I've got a four is a vector, three down to zero. I got b four is a vector, three down to zero. I got ci4, it's its carry in. It's a single uh, logic value, it's a standard logic. What are its output? It's another vector, sum four, three down to zero. And if I was to make it, if I, all I wanted, if I wanted to stop here, I could just make it sum four, four down to zero and make the carry out, the final carry out my MSB. But I don't, because I want to use this a little bit later. So there you go, I got carry out four. What's my architecture statement? Well, I've got to have a declaration section. I've got three internal signals and a component. And look at what I've done. I've given myself a note. Okay, signal Z. It's the carry out of full zero to the carry in of full one. Same thing for Y, same thing for X. Okay, it's telling me where that's all going. Finally, what is the component that I'm gonna be used using over and over? It's the full adder. What is the full adder's ports? It's got an A input, a B input, a carry in input, and what are its outputs? Sum output and carry out output. End that component. Now, my begin and end is awesome. Check it out. Cut and paste. Full zero, full one, full two, full three. All I gotta do is just port map it. Where are the inputs for that full adders? What what are the inputs for that full adder? Well, it's the LSB. The LSB and the carry in the for the whole four bit adder. What are its outputs? Well, it's the LSB, excuse me, the output. What is that one's output? It's the LSB. Where does that one's carry out go? It goes to our internal signal Z, which by the way, is the next full adder's input to its carry in. So take a look at those full zero, full one, full two, full three port maps and get the picture. Use that picture what I had just previously uh, written on the tablet there as to where those signal assignments are and check it out. End structural. All I did was do a four component instantiations. Could you imagine, I mean, think about this. What is a full adder trying to do? It's taking four inputs from one number, four inputs from another number, and the carry in, and it's trying to generate five outputs. Could you imagine doing a K map, a nine variable K map? That's the purpose of the structural approach. It's showing you that you can use these components over and over again. You don't have to get these crazy complicated minimum SOP expressions anymore. You can just have this reasonable, com reasonable component pattern things on and on and build a potentially larger system. What do you think the next step is? Is use the 4-bit adder to create an 8-bit adder. What do you think the next step from there is? Is use two 8-bit adders to create a 16-bit, so on and so forth. And I know some of you guys are groaning right now because this lecture has gone on a little bit longer. I'm not going to do that right now, but you should be able to do the structural approach using adder 4 to create an adder eight. And a little bit later, we're gonna be using the same structural approach for some of the other common functions of combinational logic. I'm not gonna do a simulation on this one right yet because it's kind of a pain to do it once you've assigned your inputs as vectors, we're going to need to use a test bench. I have not discussed test benches thus far. They're, they're pretty cool. They're VHDL scripts that you can write that will test your inputs and outputs, very similar to the simulation utility, the ISIM utility uh, use that we've been using thus far. Uh, I want this lecture to strictly deal with structural approach. I don't want to give you something else right now, but a precursor to what we will probably be doing 
real soon, is a test bench. It's pretty neat. It takes those inputs and just stimulates them. And that's exactly what it is. It's a stimulus. Uh, it's a process. And you can see, and it will actually model the device that you're you're looking at with delays and you could potentially see some uh, some conflicts developing if you're trying to run it at a high clock speed. That's another another series of lectures there, test benches, don't worry about it. But now I could easily add a UCF file to this, a user constraints file, and map my 4-bit parallel binary adder to my development board. I've got eight slide switches, just make those eight slide switches my inputs, A through B, three down to zero, three down to zero, make something else my carry in input. And what I could do is make those LEDs as my outputs. Put in the number 0010 on A. Put in 0011 on B, and what I should see is an output that adds them up. And let's pretend the carry in is zero. What's the answer? You should know this now. Okay, how does that adder work out? Work. So this concludes this lecture about the comparing and contrasting the data flow with the structural approach. It's pretty neat. You can use these reusable components here, and this kind of this picture here shows you how it all works. You know, it's half adders are part of full adders. Full adders are part of adder fours. Adder fours are part of adder eights. Adder eights are part of 16 and on and on and on until we got an adder that can add up from here to the moon. Okay, this concludes this portion of the lecture.